so much for, for joining today's session. Uh, once again, I am very, very grateful. This is MCTB uh, module two. And today we'll be talking about a topic that is of high interest, as I said. Um, some people are asking for passwords. Please, you do not need any password. All you need to do is to just uh, click on the link and then it will take you into the into the show directly. Okay. Uh, sorry, and please do not call. I can see that uh, a number of people are also trying to uh, trying to call. Please don't don't call at this um, so that we can have a very good show. And the show is also live on Facebook. Okay. Having said that, uh, you can see me blushing. You can see me smiling. Uh, yeah, wait, can you please unmute yourself? I've asked you to unmute. You can actually unmute yourself now. Uh, well, she does that. I'm just going straight. Okay. Welcome. Welcome, everyone. Um, today, we have an amazing guest. Uh, and I have a very, very big fish this time around. Uh, and my guest is no other than Mrs. Titilokbe Odelola, also known as Yaiwe. I'm going to read a bit of a uh, biography um, and, a, and a, a little of a bit of a profile. It's actually quite long, so please bear with me. Titilokbe Odelola, also known as Yaiwe, a friend and advocate who speaks in the best interest of the precious Nigerian child. She is trained advocate of SAFE. SAFE stands for securing a friendly and protective environment for children with Taiwo Akinlami Academy. Adverse Childhood Experience, ACE is an early trauma trained and certified trained and certified family and child counselor and a member of African Network of Professional Counselors, and NEPCO. This profile is quite huge. She is an alumni of Lagos Business School and Mike Oladipo Global Leadership School. Mogi. She facilitates in trainings for children, parents, caregivers, religious organizations, communities, and child-related organizations with special interest in child development and safety, sexuality education, trauma, abuse, and total well-being of children. Yeah, we started our journey as a lover of childhood preservation and protection by studying child development and family studies in the university. She had a PGD in hospital management and backed a master's in public health, MPH. Yahweh, my guest of today, champions the cause of childhood development and preservation uh, through advocacy by educating and enlightening parents, caregivers, and society on child-related matters via a podcast. The podcast is, is live everywhere on, on Instagram, different social media, and it's called The Conversation. You can always check it out anytime. Yeah, was a speaker and regular guest on several radio shows and TV for her active involvement in the protection and nurturing of the rights of children who may be subjected to various forms of abuses in the society. She volunteers for various organizations at Art Minder Society Advancement Initiative, Rescue Advancement Initiative, Rescue Village Africa, to mention just by a few. Yeah, we is driven by an ardent desire to ensure children develop and thrive responsibly. She is the founder of Parent Child 360 Initiative, a registered non-government organization in Lagos State. Ladies and gentlemen, Yeah, we is a mother to all the precious children, and she's like a mother to me. She's a friend. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome. Yeah, we, yeah, we, please. Uh, it's a round of applause for you. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm quite so happy. Sweet. I'm quite happy <laughs> having you on the show today. A lot of us. Thank you so much, sir. While growing up um, and seeing our parents in what they do, how they do it, some things we do not realize until later words uh, when we become parents and we now realize, wow, that no wonder my mom used to do this. No wonder my dad used to say this. But now, the olden days, the way, the way they trained us then is totally different from the way we are training our children today. And quite a, lot yeah. of things, quite a lot of things are happening these days that they're quite unbelievable. They are unspoken of. They are things that you cannot, you cannot just 
yeah fashion it's it's so unbelievable <laughs> they, 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 I don't want to take the words out, out of your mouth, Yahweh. I don't want to be <laughs> to today, but I think I have quite a lot of experience that we also uh, love to share with people. Welcome. Yes. Thank you. Lola. You're welcome. Thank you so much, Mr. Timmy Talker. I kindly appreciate this honor to be a part of MCTB. It's a great honor, sir. I hope you can hear me. Loud and clear. Awesome, awesome. So, and um, today, like I mentioned on the um, IG Live, said there is no place for parenting. None of us, none of us, none of us had ever attained that opportunity to say, I have created a template to be able to remold my child. We all are just learning the rope every day. With experiences, with what we see in the society, with what we get to hear on, from other people. And so that's what we use, you know, as our own templates yeah. mm. to remove our families and homes. And so the topic we are going to talk about today, this is going to be an interactive session. Please permit me, dear friends, dear parents, I'm still a young girl. I'm not going to tell you you have not done well. Rather, I'm even giving you kudos for the journey so far, for what you've done so well with your words, with your children, with every child under your watch. I'm saying well done and keep up doing the good work. And so now we're going to talk about becoming the parent you want to be. So I'm going to be sharing my slides. So Mr. Papa, let me indulge you. Should in case I'm having some issues with my slide, you'll be able to talk with me as well to share. I'll let you Hope know. you don't but mind. No, no problem. <laughs> All right, sir. So, the topic is becoming the parent you want to be. Have you developed values to live by? Becoming the parent you want to be. So that's my slide. And I said, have you developed values to live by? The slide is still coming on. Let's give it about, uh, I mean, 30 seconds to come on. It's not sure. Yes, okay. we have it now. You have it now? Absolutely. Okay, so, so becoming a parent, you must naturally have uh, permit me <laughs> permit me yeah uh, before you go on uh, may i say to our audience that you have the opportunity to actually ask your questions uh, but we want to go with the flow um, but so that you do not miss those questions just use the button below which is the chat button i can see some people are already putting stuff on chat also um, some people sent us emails uh, on some questions they would like to ask Yaiwe today. So please make use of the button of the chat, put in all your questions, your contributions, then I will make sure that Yaiwe attends to every of your questions before she leaves the show today. Otherwise, we're not gonna let her go. Over to you, Yaiwe, please take <laughs> All right, so before you can nurture a child or any being, you must have a conducive atmosphere. You must have a conducive environment, right? And so, and I ask you, a lot of us when we we're growing, we never had opportunity to grow in a house that is filled with maids. You know, we had everything at the back and corner of our uh, fingertips. So, but things have changed. And so the first thing is a profound responsibility for you as human being is to undertake to parent a child, which is a great opportunity great great honor and the moment a child doesn't feel safe in that environment you cannot expect that child to thrive the moment a child cannot grow responsibly cannot communicate with you the child cannot even ask you questions cannot even express him or herself then you are creating more damage to the growth of the child then another thing when children's self-worth are washed down as if you're washing a cloth they are not nourished that child can never nurture can never grow that child can never can never live up to be a responsible adult so one thing is you need to ensure that your child is worthy feels worth of him or herself because our children have different differences and they need to be appreciated with their uniqueness. They need to know that truly that their mom loves me. 
that our mom knows who I am. You know, these are things we need to learn and we need to do for a child, for a family to nurture in an environment. And the question is, what values, what values, I ask you again, what values have you developed for your child to live by? Is your home conducive enough? What process have you put in place in your own sense of self as a parent to parent a child? And so now this takes me to the next one, which is beliefs and values. And let me also give you this good news. There is no one right, there is no right way to raise a child. There is no one right way that this is the way I want to train my child. And when I train A like this, it has to be like that for B. There is no right way. There's no one way. Because where you will gain experiences from the outside world, from families, from friends, and information or news flying all around. And so, what process have you put in place in your own sense of their self, identity, and self-esteem as a parent? And before you can do this, you must have beliefs and values. And I put to you, their parents, their caregivers, what value do you have for your child to emulate? What awareness do you have regarding the values and virtues you hope your child will grow up to emulate? To raise a How do you speak to them? Do you have integrity for your child to emulate? These are beliefs and values. Your sense of right or wrong, does your child can boldly say, I like the way mommy talks. I like the way daddy thinks. Something is wrong in the way mommy, mommy makes it feel good for us. I like the way mommy attack issues. I like the way mommy solve issues. Because your guidance system is the way your children will emulate to become an individual. And these are still the values I'm talking about. So what values are you representing to your child? I'm sorry, like I said, I'm just one young girl there, but I relate with children and I do things like a child. And that's why people gave me that name, Yewe. So forgive me if I'm going to make you complete it today. That is moment. So please, I want you to imagine something. Now you're in the four corners of your home. Please, everyone, can you close your eyes? I'm not seeing because I'm sharing my slide with you. I just want you to take a minute. This is the activity we want to do now. Imagine that you are attending a graveside service. And while you are there, you can hear music going around. You can hear members of the bereaved crying, wailing in tears. You can hear everybody saying, oh, that man was kind. Oh, that man was that man was so loving to people. That man was so compassionate. You could hear cries. You could hear people saying, "Ah, I wish the man had not gone. I wish that man had another opportunity to just stay longer." And while you are there, you are hearing us from all sides, and you look through. You know, you are at the graveside. You could see the epitaphs on different tombstones, and you are still looking through. As a thought comes through your mind, so ask yourself, what would you like written on yours? What would you like written on your tombstone? Will he be a loyal man? Be a prideful man? Will he be a, a, a wicked woman? Will he be a rude woman? Will he be a woman that's, that never loved anyone? 
Will it be a woman or a man that never had any sense of integrity while he was on earth? What message would you like written on your tombstone? What would describe your best legacy in the world? What would your children replicate in your values and beliefs? When you are still there, what do you think people will say about this world? What do you think people will say about you? Would you like to take a moment to review your values, present values, present attitudes and actions? You showcase to your children at home, you show forth to your family members or everyone around you. Will you be comfortable enough for your children to build on these values you are living on right now? Or would you like to continue with the existing values you have replicated in your home? I need you to think through. And after doing that, please write down positive adjectives that describes you and summarizes who you are. I would like to see that in the chat room. Who are you? Is he a man of value? Is he a man of integrity? Is he a man that only friends he as a child? What kind of style do you use in your home? Are you the wonderful father the children can easily communicate to? Are you the mother with the listening skills? that allows anything for the child to say to her? Are you the one with the, the best, a good personnel? Are you the one with a positive esteem? How effective are you? Or are you the one with insecurities? Who are you? The moment you can answer this question, then you can't blame or in the moment you can't answer this question rightly, then you can't blame your child. You know why? Because there's nothing that emulates when it comes to belief and when it comes to culture. So I throw to you. Look at the emo, um, the feelings, emotion by the side. So how are you feeling right now? I'm sorry if I put you in a mood that you really never liked. But how are you feeling right now? Are you feeling? Curious? Are you shocked? Are you interested? Are you the playful father? Are you the stressed one always complaining of work to your child and using your work as a excuse never to listen to your child at home? Are you the mother that your work and your friends are a priority to your child? How determined are you? How distracted are you with the same things of the world? What values are you living by every day? Are you satisfied with your value and belief? Are you pleased with your values? Do you feel that now? Are you disgusted? Are you ashamed? Or are you hopeful? That's the activity for, for now. They're still going to do more. So while that is going on, what culture have you put in place? Are you the parent that wakes up every morning and make the child to know that there's still a God that's still existing? Do you have a culture pain in your home? Do you listen to music together? Do you watch movies with your children? Do you even cook special meals with your children? How do you relate with your other family members? What culture have you built in your home? What family traditions do you have? What simple statement do you use in your home? Let me give you an example. I have a set of twins and a 12 year old boy. The twins are, and then one of my daughters, uh, the twin now, she's a very, she has a strong personality. More of a choleric. She has a strong personnel. So every time she expects a sister, which is a, who is a sanguine, 
to do to meet up with her expectations every time. I had to sit them down one day and I told her, Tony, Tony and Toby are different being entirely. Tony and Toby have their special, have their uniqueness and their specialty. And we need to learn to know that we are a family. We need to learn to know we love each other. So Tony, we have to love each other in this family. We need to support your sister because she might be on the slow side, not finish work at the same pace you finish work. Do you say such statement to your child? Or you will rather blame one child for the other? Or you will rather favor one child for the other? I need you to start off with statements like we are family. We love each other and we support each other because that is what families are all about. That is what a family tradition should be like. We're moving to the next slide now, which is becoming a parent you want to be, which is actually the topic of today. I just wanted to put you in a pensive mood to think through about your actions and attitude as a parent or as a carer with a child in your care. So Anna has care. What are the good reasons for you to be a parent? Why do you want to be a parent? Is it for you to recreate your own childhood joys? Is it for you to grow and share familiar, family love? Is it for you to make yourself a better person? Or is it for you to spite others? Or is it for you to create a sense of life's purpose in the children? Or is it for you to fit in and meet society's expectations? Or is it because children are fun to be with and just want to be a parent as well? So why do you want to become a parent? Why do you want to be a successful parent? What is important for you? what is important for your family's success? What do you do to make you a better parent? So here on my slide, I said anyone can have a child and call themselves a parent. And a real parent is someone who puts that on selfish needs and wants. Do you do that for your children? A parent, when you become one, you remember you don't allow anything in your life that you don't want to reproduce in your children. And that was why I started with the family beliefs and tradition. Are you the one that smokes an eye so that your children will not know you are smoking? And yet you have the God to tell your child, don't smoke. Because you've already created a family tradition. So actually, you don't want your children to reproduce the things that are doing wrongly. Then you won't do it. Never permit yourself to do anything that you are not willing to see your child do. I tell parents, it's easy for us to blame children when they're easily hurt or they make errors. But is it the same thing we do to ourselves when we make mistakes? Is it the same thing we do to ourselves when we do things that we're not pleased for others to see? How do you reprimand yourself? The best that a child, the best thing you are can do is to be a demonstrator. To be a demonstrator. So what you want your child to do as a parent, you will demonstrate it, you will be consistent, you will be constant in doing that thing for the child to replicate. And I say this, motivating factor in children's lives is a desire to become the kind of person they believe their parents want. That's children for you. They want to satisfy the parents. They want you to be happy with them. That is their own motivating factor. 
So this means that you must communicate clearly the values and personal characters. I'm talking about you becoming the parent you want to be. You must communicate clearly the values and personal characteristics you believe are most important that are genuine. And this might include your honesty. This might include your concern for others, your care for others, your respect for others, your initiative, your love for people, your love for environment, for people within your community, in your spheres of life, in your organization. How you even communicate in the presence of the child at home? Are you one of those ones that will say, just tell, just tell them I'm not available because I don't want anybody to know I'm around. Are you those? I'm, saying, he's just, I'm just joking, I'm just joking. But you've forgotten that you have put something in the head of the child. That is a pattern and your child will replicate it. Develop values to live by. Develop it. A motivating factor in that child is to see your family having a vision, a vision that you all live by every day. Samples the children can see. I tell people, children hear what they see. They act what they see, not what they hear. So you can only say, yes, I'm doing well. After all, I'm a good parent, but what do you do? Whether in the corridors of your homes you think children are not seeing, they see because they learn better by seeing, by being virtual rather than hearing. And so becoming that parent you want, let's, I've listed this, some keys, some keys you need to work with. And key one says, Create a sense of security. Create a sense of security. And the first basic need of parenting is to create feelings of security in children. This is really becoming chaotic now. This is becoming scary, even for me as well. We've seen places where parents are the ones now molesting their children. Family members want taking control of the body of children. Is there a sense of security in that? Is that the kind of parent you want to be? A parent, a parent molesting the body of his or her child. And in order for children to function well, they need to have a sense of security in the home they reside in. Are you one of those parents that make your child tremble when they hear you come back from work? One of those parents that make your child shut down, losing their self-esteem because yell every little errors they make in the home. Are you one of those parents? that makes the home conducive enough and says to the child, I have your back in any day. I'll always be there for you. That is a sense of security for a child. Do you have that to portray to your child? The object of the sense of security is to enable children to feel secure enough to take responsibility for themselves and begin to take on challenges. You know, when children feel secure, they even say it to their friends and say, I know that their mommy will fight for me. No, it's not a joke. Children feel happy when they can say boldly to people around them to say, Daddy and mommy are always there for me. And no one's like, no. Once I tell them now, once I report you, they will fight for me. That's a sense of security. I throw this question to you. Is your home? environment characterized by truth and respect? Is your home a safe, a safe refuge, both physically and emotionally for your child? 
children with a good sense of security are more willing to take initiative when they enter situations and are better to apply themselves to the task at hand. That's what sense of security does to children. And Kitu says, strength the sense of identity. Strengthen the sense of identity. As parents, would you want your child to develop positive feelings about him or herself? Have you been one of those parents that have been violating and abusing the child emotionally, verbally, equating and comparing your child's children and expecting so much from your child when you have not even met your own expectations as a parent? Would you like to see qualities like empathy? This is a sense of identity. Do you even have the empathy for your child to, to emulate? Would you like to see qualities like care, consideration, compassion, and respect for their siblings? Because some of these qualities are just normal. They are just normal self-image or identity. Children. And children develop as psychological mirrors. I told you they act what they see, what they hear. They reflect the feelings expressed to them verbally. The moment you tell a child, you can never turn to anything good. It's already sitting because the children are psychological mirrors. They sink in and it sits there. What, size of, what sense of identity are you giving your child? It's, 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 I get bitter when I hear parents saying, my child has, has low self-esteem. Your child has low self-esteem because you also have a low self-esteem issue because of the things you say to that child. What kind of positive feedback do you give to your child? When they make errors, when they do things, do you appreciate them? Do you give rewards? Do you celebrate them with their little wins? That is sense of identity. Or do you cast your children into roles to meet your own personal needs? Because lots of us now, we're beginning to act like the way our parents acted. I want my child to be this. You've forgotten to find out who your child really is or what the interest of your child is. We have failed. We don't want to know. We want to compete with other parents to make our children feel better. But it's not our children we're making feel better. We're making, we're making our children to meet our own personal needs. And key three, foster a sense of belonging. Is your child acceptable? Is your child comfortable with others? Are they accepted by their peers, by their siblings, by your family members? Does your child have a sense of belonging, accepted in his home? Or are you always the one that says, this child is, I just don't know where this child came from. This child is always troublesome. You're already tagging your child with names. You've forgotten you were once a child before you became an adult. Do you also allow your child to Because your child has never seen you giving out to others. How will your child have a sense of sharing? Have you even taught your child how to take turns? Because when we are adults, when we, are, when we want to buy things at the mall, we always look for a fast, fastest way to quickly buy, get in and buy and leave. We've forgotten that some people were on the queue. And yeah, when you are replicating that attitude, you will keep saying, I don't know where he came from. I don't even know where he learned that attitude from. What kind of child is this? You've forgotten that he saw you. When you wriggle your way to be in front just to get what others are queued for, for us. Are you looking out for the welfare of others? As your children see you giving out to your family members, giving out to the needy, even to the extent of giving in the church, in your religious home, in the mosque, are you one of those parents that will say, once I give you 13 era, you should accept it because that's what you have. You can't give what you don't have. 
what sense of belonging or what sense of social justice are you replicating in the life of your child? For the sense of belonging, do you even know children also have rights to speak? It's a right of the child to speak, a freedom to have an input in decisions you are making for them. Do you value your child's input and ideas? Do you even make them feel stable when they say things? Or, or you water down their ideas or their suggestions? You've forgotten they also have a role to play. And for the key five, key four, inspire the sense of purpose. Character traits as such as motivation, conviction, determination, perseverance, integrity, ethical values. All this can go through a sense of purpose. Have you ever taken time to discuss expectations with your child? You only mandate it. You don't discuss it. You don't ask whether it's something they would like to do. Do you even leave room for negotiation with your child? Because it is very important for our children to agree with you on what is reasonable, not what to meet your own personal needs. Inspire your child to have a sense of purpose in their own. That is the only way you can become the parent you want to be. And key five, build a sense of personal competence. I'm talking about the sense of personal competence is critical to feelings of self-confidence, resilience, and independence. The majority of us have decided to make our children not be too responsible to carry out chores as little as chores are, to tidy up their rooms, to lace their shoes, to wash their plates, to take place to the kitchen, we call older adults to take their plates. The moment your child can learn to do things for themselves, and children show it in their developmental stage, you will see them when you want to do, they'll say, no, mommy, leave it, mommy, I want to take it to the kitchen. From age five, your children should be able to start doing things for themselves. When they are done playing in their play area, let them arrange their toys. That is a sense of personal competence. That is a sense of independence. They know how to play with games. They should be able to arrange it. Even if it's not to your satisfaction, make them responsible. You want to build a sense of personal competence in your child. How competent are you in your attitude in your home? Are you one of those fathers that will throw your shoes from the door? And your wife will say, Daddy, why not get in and push? And then, I got tired there and I need to put it there. But you will be the one to yell at her. How can you make this room untidy? What a dirty boy. What a dirty girl. You've forgotten. You created that sense of competence by your own actions and attitude. So for you to become the parent you want to be, you need to have feelings of competence and to enable children to feel confident in their ability to deal with whatever life brings. Some of us have not even allowed our children to build resilience, to fight for themselves, to speak for themselves. Because what do we say? They are still children. They don't know what they want. When we, what they want. When we be competent enough to speak for themselves. You think children, children are babies. They are reasonably being like you and I. And that's the unfortunate thing parents are failing to see. Children are reasonably being. Not even with the children we have these days. Anything you say, they have better ideas, better input. Only if you want to learn from them. But the moment you want to bring your 20 and old traditional ideas, they will keep short because you have shot their competence with your actions and attitude. Let's go to facts. Most of us emerge from the childhood. We, we emerge from our childhood with conscious and unconscious psychic wounds and emotional unfinished business. So what we are living with is we're incomplete, we're doomed to repeat them. 
some of us are still replicating the childhood wounds we had when we were growing up. I'm not saying you shouldn't spoil your children. I'm not saying you shouldn't give them the best of the best of things. But do you actually make them to know that work pays? Do you speak to them your struggles? Do you tell them your failures? Do you make them to pick out learnings from your failures and from your success, from your wins? What are you putting in place? The greatest threat to the sanity of your of a child, therefore, may not necessarily be the human and the system predictors. It may actually be your own ignorance. Yeah. Majority of her parents now says some of us that are advocates of the child. You even shut us off. You say we don't know what we're saying. You're only forgetting that the output of your child in the future <laughs> lies on you. Is what you put now your investment now in your child that you will reap in the future. Invest in yourself. For you are the most important factor in your child's welfare, growth, and mental health. Obviously, they will learn from other people, but they learn the 90% of the actions and attitude and attributes and, and living, or living rather, from you. I started with, don't expect to be the perfect parent because there's no perfect parent. You need to view parenting as a continuous learning. Keep learning every day. Keep every day. Being a parent is tough. But most of us feel like we could do a better job. Yes, we could do. And this is one of it. By reevaluating your own attitude and your own actions daily, it's the job of the heart. Is what you do. Is what you invest in. It's the job of the heart. It's a job that transforms you forever. That's just it. And so. Going to wonder to begin from. I know I've bombarded you. I hope I've not con confused you, but I'm able to say that you also have a lot of learning to do if you truly want to become the parent you want to become. And so you're wondering where do you want to begin from? Commit to taking care of yourself and staying centered. When I mean centered, Commit to taking care of yourself so that you can be happy. You can be patient, mommies, daddy, so that you can encourage other parents as well. That means you need to integrate your daily self nurturing into life. You need to care for yourself. Because let me shock you if anything happens today, these children will live their life. You need to eat well. You need to maintain your sound health. Your parents are just complaining. Oh, my, this is This child just wants to kill me. The child is not killing you. You have too much expectations from your child. And the moment you can't calm down, calm yourself, you engage your child, you will misbehave. And that's what your child will pick up on. Commit to managing yourself. When your emotions are not regulated, you are not in a fight with your child. Your child is not the enemy. It's your emotions you need to put in check. And number two, commit to loving the one you are with. The one thing we know for certain about child development is that children feel loved and children they thrive. So you need to be committed. I'm not saying those that are not loved also don't turn well, but I'm saying for you to become that parent you want to be, you need to be committed. The ones who thrive are the ones who feel loved and cherished exactly for who they are, because every child is unique. I will keep reemphasizing on this. 
every child is unique. I just told you I've got two sets of girls, twin. They are not the same. So you're training them different. The hard work you put in as a parent will also differ because you need to accept who that child is, cherish them, know they are being, guide their behavior. It's not the child that is the enemy. It's the behavior that they are imputing, they are putting out. And that's the secret. The moment you can disassociate the child from the behavior, see it from a perspective that the child is not the enemy. Put on a positive lens and celebrate every step to rebuild your child. And number three, commit to stay connected. Yes, I know, I know I'm talking to various forms of parents. I wouldn't know if I have some separated divorces and all that, but you still need to reconnect with your child no matter the circumstances. Remember that connecting with your child brings connection. Commit to staying connected. It's not just about teaching them. Your quality time matters a lot. Now, we parents are even doing worse more than uh, the things and the youth. We don't have a time to put our phone down. All the children are working with their gadgets. Daddy and mommy are working with their gadgets. How many times do we surround the dining table to eat together to commune as a family? We have lost it. How many times do we even create time to pray as a family? because that's another way to stay connected. How many times do we say, oh, today is our, is our uh, movie day, once a week or two, in two weeks? That is the way to stay connected. How many times do you give to listen to the complaints of the child? Do you even learn to hug? Because these are places where you can begin from. Do you even have ways to give your child an high five? <coughs> Do you laugh with them? Or you are the frowning father and mother? Do you have a time for everybody to shut down? And do you have a time in your home that you make the children to come together and tell you, what has daddy done wrong this week? What has mommy done wrong this week? Commit to role modeling respect. This is number four. You want to raise children who are considerate and respectful right through their teenage to their adulthood. You need to take a deep breath and speak to them respectively, especially for those with the, teen, with the teens in their homes. Because it's not always easy when you're angry and you're lashing out sorts of things to them. You really need to take it easy. Because you are the role model, so you have to be in charge. Don't take it personally, because that face too will pass. So you need to just model respect to them. Commit to teaching emotional intelligence. So in addition to modeling emotional self-management, we also need to learn to manage our emotions teaching them to self-suit themselves. People will say, uh, how do we now teach children emotional intelligence? Children just have to create it. They need to learn to, to know when not to do things. You need to emphasize on emotions when they do things wrong. Talk about the emotions. When you're just grunting, says, mommy, but you, you, I don't like the way you're talking to me. And you need to ask her, so are you saying I don't have a right to reprimand you for that action you're just putting out because that action is rude? They need to process it. Another way is to emphasize on their emotions. Listen to them when they're having feelings to express. You're teaching them emotional intelligence. When you listen, when they're expressing, their feelings. It's not the time you want to listen, but you can negotiate with them to so say, I will listen in a few minutes, but please allow me to finish this work. That is teaching them emotional intelligence. Commit to looking for the needs behind your child's behavior. For every child, for every child, for every attitude a child replicates, there is a reason 
for that action. Commit to guidance. You earlier, you need to re recommit yourself. You need to concentrate in doing things you know that will bring greater values for children to emulate. Commit to remembering what's important, which is an attitude of gratitude to your children. That's the way to begin with. When your children do things for you, are you one of those that still says, thank you? Because children will say thank you when they learn you seeing, when they see you saying thank you to others, when they do things for you. But when you have an attitude of entitlement, entitlement, children will have that spirit of entitlement. They will have this thank you because they see you with pride when people do things for you. You even boast of it to say, after all, I worked for it, but the little thank you goes a long way. Commit to remembering that rad radical self-acceptance and compassion and keep your perception, no matter what it is, keep your, keep your perception. Children will make mistakes. So will you as an adult. I repeat, there are no perfect parents, no perfect children, no perfect families. But there are families who live in the embrace of great love where everyone thrives. So the only way to create that kind of family, to be a parent you want to become, is to make daily choices that take you in that direction. It is no magic. You have to create your family vision. You need to put in hard work, put correction in place, set your children on the right path. If you see any trail that the children are going above, bring them back with your support, bring them onward to a more life. Just keep taking positive steps, please, dear parents, because what you know is you will find yourself in a whole new landscape because putting in more work. And now, here it is. So raising God-conscious, moral, successful children with a sense of civic responsibility in today's world it's not easy. I wouldn't lie to you. Is it the kind of music they listen to now? <laughs> Is it the kind of friends they get to meet with in their schools, in their faith-based organizations? But what is the key? Effective parenting. As you struggle to raise your successful child, or as you struggle to raise your, your children successfully, you need knowledge and skills to communicate wisely with them. And you create a happy, loving family relationship within your home. And here's the conclusion. The best kind of parent you can be is to lead by example. Drew Marimor said so. And that was why I started with your beliefs and culture. What are your beliefs? What are your culture? And the most important nation is family. That's the truth. In the whole wide world, the only important nation is family, because that is a production factory of the society where the is nothing escapes the radar. And the healthy child is what we emerge from that nation. But your home is not conducive. If your home is a war for your child. You cannot expect to have a healthy child. If your home is a place where your children are never listened to, they are never given an opportunity or time, you can't expect to have a healthy child. Here comes action. What kind of example, what kind of parent you want to become? We all parents have one thing in common, and our wish is to raise children who are good people. And if you want to do that, you talk to your children, 
about the values that are important to you when you were growing up. The values you have created, the templates you are working with right now that you know will be of great guide to them. The ones you know they can model. Don't just walk the talk. I mean, don't just talk the walk, but walk the talk. Because children can spot hypocrisy in the eat bit. When you say A, daddy is always telling me he says B. Mommy is always telling people he says, she says C. But mommy's way of life is actually A. Your call to action. Create a vision of greatness in your child that will serve to inspire her and encourage her to be the best she, he or she can be. Thank you. Fantastic. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. That's, Thank you. that's indeed a master class. Thank you so much, Mrs. <laughs> okay. Wow. Wow. I actually have a full cool note already, and I believe that uh, uh, my classmates also have uh, I've been able to put pen on paper. Now it's time for us to open uh, the uh, open the class for for questions. Chat room. Yes. So please go into the chat room and put in your questions. While we do that, Ma, I have a few things to engage you on. You talked okay. about sense of sense of security. Okay. Uh, yes, sir. I, I remember growing up, uh, the only time that my mom ever got to my school, either of my parents ever got to my school, was when I was in primary three. And she came, mm -hmm. I, I attended Franciscan Nursery and Primary School, uh, and there was a, there is an hospital very close to that school. She came to visit okay. a friend in the hospital, and she thought, oh, let me just see my child. Immediately, I spotted her from the window. I jumped <laughs> and I ran into this. <laughs> Why? Because I just don't want her, I don't want to have that feeling that my mom can always come to my school to defend me or to do anything. While on the other hand, <laughs> a lot of people cannot do anything without their parents. Up till, up till when I finished school, um, I never had any of my parents visit, either visit me in school or do anything for me in school. I did everything on my own. So people might say, no, that, that's too much. But what kind of parents should we be? Should we be the kind of parent that will leave our parents <laughs> to do whatever they have to do to make the mistakes they have to make? Or we need to guide them, tutor them, tell them what they need to do as per time? In the first instance, I'm sure grandma never wanted you to be scared of her. She only made you, she only applied the knowledge she knew of. Absolutely. And what she was also trained with. Yeah. You know, so, and so do we also want to replicate that to your boys and your daughter? No, obviously. No. Because you want, no matter the errors they are making at that point in time, your children must have a sense of identity to say, even if daddy catches me here, I know mm. he would never be happy with me, mm. but I will be able to explain to him why I was caught in this act. That's the level we should be able to make our children to get but to. But also, uh, because of the kind of environment we live in, most parents now are very, very insecure. We talked about yeah. children security. Insecurity is a big problem. Parents are yeah, also very, us, very yeah. insecure. You see, uh, parents have to pick their child in school, have to drop them back in school. Back in school, then you still have some parents, some children that come to yeah. school with security. Uh, yes. So, in the, in the kind of world we live in, where there are different vices, how, how close should we be into monitoring our kids? How close should we be into checking what they do? Um, is it, when you go on phones, on the iPads of just teenagers, you'll be amazed at yeah. things they see, things they watch, things they get themselves involved in. Um, if you are saying yes, we need to give our children opportunity to explore, we need to also let them be free. How much of freedom do they need? That's the question, Yairi. Your role is actually to direct them. As much as it is to help your children develop the ability to make sound decisions and choices, right? Mm -hmm. But you must have been able to enlighten them about those vices. The problem majority of us are having with these teenagers is we never had any form of discussion with them. Mm. I can categorically tell you, I learned a lot I knew 
for when I got into university at the age of 20. Mm. I never had any form of education. And ma majority of us fall in that category. category. Yeah. But the children of these days, they know more than you and me. They're exposed. That's they true. are virtual. Mm. They are vast in technology. So but it, before we introduce them to technology, we need to have some certain discussions with them. Okay. Even you as an adult, where you're your system, some things brought up, isn't it? Yes, yes. quite a lot. <laughs> what, decision, what decision do you make? Do you ever, have you ever discussed such, such engagement with your child to say, now I'm going to give you a laptop, I'm going to give you an iPad, because it's a necessity now that the education system is going virtual. Mm. But these are things you might likely experience while you're online. And this should be your reaction and what to I'm, do. I'm sorry, I, I'm sorry I should give you this orientation, but with the way things is now, the global world village is changing. Yeah. So these are things you might like get involved, you might see, you might be, we are, human beings are naturally inquisitive, we are curious. Yes. And so you can't blame teenagers if they are showing their curiosity, but you need to enlighten them ahead. Oh. I'm giving my child of 12 year old a phone, and you're telling me when things pop up, they're not likely to, he might not even know what he's clicking on, but we need to show them, we need to teach them, so that we they see they can make decisions. Let me share one experience with you. Excuse Maybe me. this will help to enlighten parents. My son is a 12 year old, a GSS one. He's doing his online classes. And when he was online class, some of his classmates created an online group chat by the corner. Okay. And you know, he didn't tell me. Differently from the school. Differently uh, from the school. So you can imagine wow. how versatile, how good these children can be. Even the school didn't know. Wow. I know the, the young man, because I know I have I have a young man that's a bit, you know, he, he, but he will ask you questions, but he might not be quickly to say, okay, okay, okay. He joined the group. So one day, as usual, because he knows that, as usual, when he's on, we come to check. After he's done, we come to also check him online. We check what he has done so far. And he, we bumped on the group chat and we ask, son, hmm. What happened? Which group chat? He, do you know that the boy joined the group? He doesn't even know what the group entails. Can you imagine? <laughs> <laughs> but unfortunately, they are his friends. Mm. And that's quite... That's These are quite things... Good. And that is me. For a parent, I never even knew that they could create a group chat outside the school. So it's my responsibility now. I was upset, I must be honest with you. But in the other sense, I thought of it. I said, but I see... When I'm chat, when I'm doing things, I will see leave a chat. Do you want to chat? I see it propping up on my system. But, but, so did I enlighten him about it? So those are things we should not shy away from. Majority of us are beginning to act the way our parents acted. We are not engaging children. Our children are That's brilliant. They are intellectual. It. That is it. They are smart kid. <laughs> see those things you are scared of engaging them with. They will learn it. They will. Whether they like it or not. So why not? So why not start the engagement now? Majority of us, are, if I ask now, how many people have started their sexuality education with their children? Some <laughs> don't even have to about it. Some will still be calling the penis a uh, 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 cocoa. Coco. <laughs> Mr. Mr. Big. Mr. And they tell you it's against it's against our culture. You don't tell kids such things it's, yet. You don't tell them penis is penis. It's cocoa. Really? It, no, it's Excuse it's totally me? wrong. And, and when a teenager already knows what to do when he or she impregnates a child, another teenager. And you're not talking about you're not talking about sex, you're not talking about abortion, you're not talking about pregnancy. Hell no. We're well, just sitting on the on the gun Yeah, well, th thank you, thank you so much now. for this. Thank you so much. But if you look at the kind of parents we also have and the, the kind of um busy high class parents that we have today. How many of us really have time for, yeah. our, for our wards, for our children? So how can we balance this? Um, let's take Lagos, for example. If I live, okay. in, if I live in Ikeja and I work in, in VI or in, in Lekki, I probably need to leave the house by five o'clock or five four. in the morning or four o'clock in the morning. Yeah. And I will, not, I will not get back home until 
10 o'clock, 11 o'clock. So where is the time? Where is the time to nurture these children? Where is the time to educate them? Where is the time to bond with them? So if I have this kind of busy lifestyle, what do you advise me to do? What, what do you advise as parents uh, uh, that we should do in order to balance this, this whole issue? All right. Um, so this is a practical example that we all live by every day. It is a norm for all legs. And the question that, that was why I started with that belief and values. In as much you have children that can they can relate, because I mentioned children are reasonable beings. Yeah. Start letting your children know your work schedule. Okay. Whether two year, three year, or four year, let them be part of your work lifestyle. Obviously, at this time, you might have people, family members, or maid, or nanny, or whoever that is helping you sorting them out as well. Yeah. But still, don't make it the duty of the nanny or the caregiver leaving your house to educate your children about your, about your work lifestyle. You will be the one to take charge to enlighten the children. No matter how busy we are, we are all heading under this busy, busy, busy schedule. It's the work we do. Time in a week. Mm. That day you will have time in a week. But we have time to engage our friends on social media. <laughs> be on Instagram to check the latest. Be on WhatsApp to know, have you heard? Mr. Tokwe, have you heard? Uh, Mr. Tola, he has gotten another wife. Have you heard? Have you done this? Uh, but we don't we have don't the have time. time for the children. Why can't we divide that time? I'm not saying we can't all work. We can work. We can all work. But let your children know the kind of work you do. Let them know. Sometimes when they see you now, majority of parents are working at home. It's even a bad time that a lot of parents cannot even, they can't juggle. They can accommodate right. the essence right. of the children, the, inter right. the interaction, the needs of the children, seeking for their attention. You hear parents complaining, what the hell are we doing? <laughs> so that means all the while you've been going to work, you think all is well with your child. Hmm. And now that your child is seeing you 24 seven, to create just a little, oh, hello, I said something, even if just a pat on the back. Hello, yeah. sweetheart, I'm coming. You're not, you're not used coming. To that. Just give me a little mm. time. Mm. Because they are not used to So what value are you creating? Mm. Let them be part of your lifestyle. Let them know. Mm. Let them know. Mommy is, ah, daddy's work is the type that works in the office from 8 to 10, yeah. 8 to that. Daddy is an IT person. We ask some of our children. Some don't even know what their parents do. That's they true. just say daddy goes to work, that's mommy all. goes to work, but they don't know what. And that's do. all. The spot out. They don't know. So involve your children to be a part of your work lifestyle. You'll be shocked sometimes that children will say, "Mom, daddy, why not do this now? Maybe it will even give you time to rest." Now they are looking out for your well-being, but you've forgotten that children also need that time to to feel it, to experience your time. This There's no excuse. We should stop giving these excuses. We can work things out. That's correct. We seek Thank we you. seek attention from our from our spouses, isn't it? From yes, our it relations, is. isn't yes. it? Yes. Oh, really? But we can create the time. So why are we always put stop ethics? Now, really, th let, let let me pick you up on that, especially for parents that actually have teenagers. Um, you yes. realize that the kind of teenagers we have today, their needs are totally different from ours. So how, how do we, okay, you're talking about bonding, you're talking about having times to spend with them. What's the 13 year old, 14 year old, the channel he or she wants to watch? It's not the channel the 50 year old man wants to watch. Yeah. So yeah. The, you see that, you see this imbalance in their needs, in their priorities. So what can we do as parents to, to really find that middle, middle ground in engage, engaging our words, in engaging our teenagers, and also in connecting with them. Um, you remember I mentioned something about children learning to share. Yeah. In that situation, I will call all of them together. We call my own family meeting, our pep talk day. We all sit together. So which channel do you like to watch? They will tell me. Which one does uh, t Bobo likes to watch? They will tell me. Okay. Make a timetable. Make okay. a timetable the timetable i'm going to be involved i won't be the one to tell them what to do which of the days do they show your your program you tell me the day yeah. so by the time they create that timetable did they create it i will look at it 
because at the same time, I don't want my children to, to, to take over the screen for the day, the rest of their lives, for a whole day. <laughs> I so want a time I can also have their time to be able to talk to them, a time for us to read, a time for us to talk about what we read uh, from, the, from, the, from the storybook, you know, a time to watch movie, a time to gist, a time for them to rest as well. So create a timetable for yourself. I do that for my own. Okay. There are little, little things we can do. If it's a teenager that is the oldest or the eldest, go and meet with your siblings. Do a family meeting amongst yourself. Make them responsible. It's not everything you want, you want to be in charge. You want to be in charge. You want to be charge. Make them responsible to be able to think. Because what we do is we for the children. We don't allow the children to think for themselves. And that's something. If mommy says so, if daddy says so, is what he say I will do. It's what mm. mommy said I will do. We have relegated them to make them feel self love. You know, and, to and, that, and that actually affects them in the outside world as well. They will not be able to make decisions for Absolutely. themselves. They will not be able to Absolutely. actually uh, stand out even uh, among their peers Absolutely. because they are waiting. Have perseverance and you see them bringing out anger. Mm -hmm. That's it. That's it. Because they are not used to it. Because they are used to people telling them what to do. So when it comes to uh, situations whereby they have to take initiatives on their own, they are found wanting. And that's what we don't know. Their tolerance, their tolerance level also is very low. Absolutely. Because you're already reprimanding one for another. Mm. You've forgotten that you can engage them to be... Now you, you can make them... Oh, house of rep. Who is the chairman for the house of rep today? Create something out of your home. Mm. Cheerleaders. So we are the leaders today, we are the community leaders today. Say <laughs> something, make something funny. Honestly. Thank you Honestly. so much, ma. Thank you so much, ma. This is really uh, eye-opening for us. Um, for the rest of us in the class, thanks for joining today. Please drop your comments in the chat, chat section and uh, put your questions in there as well. We have some questions. We also saw a lot of some... questions are here, sir. Yeah, we got some questions also via email. Um, so I would I would like Great. to take one of them. Uh, okay, so okay. there's a question talking about rights. Uh, have we not misused? Oh. <laughs> have we not misused the right of? Okay, talking about rights. Okay, I think this person is referring to when you said children should uh, we should give them the right to do everything they want, not everything. Allow them to explore. Yeah. They also have their own rights. I yeah. think that's what this person is talking about. And that says, have we not okay. allowed them to misuse this right? An example is a child that came to change a TV channel when the parents are watching. So I think this, this I, have, I have a very similar uh, story around this also, where I okay. visit myself and my wife visited a, a senior colleague. A and the, okay. the 13 year old child just came in. So, yeah, it's a time for. I think, I think it's, uh, I don't know what story she wanted to watch. And she picked the remote <laughs> and just changed it right away without any excuse, without anything. And the father, that sounded, that looks so strange to me. But the father just like, oh, okay, it's time for your, for your, for your program. Ah, talk about, please, can we, can we go out? And I don't know I have any problem with that, but I have a problem with the fact that there was no courtesy. I have a problem with the fact that. Awesome. Yes. That's the word. Exactly. So looking at giving the child the right to do anything he wants to do and also balancing it with uh Yoruba we say use your own brain as well. Don't don't <laughs> <laughs> exactly so I'm finding the right word for that. So what will you say to this? All right. When I say a child also have rights, every child actually have rights and every adult also have rights. Yeah. So, but when it comes to things like this, there's a culture in your own and your culture has permitted your child to do things without caution because you have thrown caution into the wind. So, when I mentioned your child has, I can't say because I mentioned that because from your own perspective, your child is allowed to do anything at his own will. There's never been any caution. When, when we are using this word right, it doesn't mean children should not know when there should be boundaries. Exactly, that's the word. For every action, for every action a child replicates, they either learnt it somewhere, 
they saw it somewhere mm -hmm. or they heard about seen, learn, heard, and they will want to try it out. Mm. The moment you can ask them, why did you do that? Did you ask for permission? Did you tell me you're going to work on that particular time? Did you know anything just around here? You are not to come to interrupt until the guest leaves so that I can have my maximum time with my guest. I'm not saying you should send your children away, but these are little, little things we look away from. Yeah. And the children are acting it. But when they now go out, you now say, I'm a Milojusha. <laughs> that child embarrassed me. embarrassed and uh, embarrassed Exactly. <laughs> it's what you permitted. It's what you allowed. You've thrown, you've thrown cushion into the wind. So you don't expect that child to act better. Hmm. Now, if my children want to pick things, they have the they have all the all, all the jolly jolly everything to pick. But they do one thing. I told them not that they know because the child is a, is an open slate. There's nothing written. Look at my palm. Nothing written on the lines of the life of a child. It's what you That's input true. in that child that the child acts out. That's true. I told them before you pick anything in my fridge because it's my husband's house. You have to you tell ask him. me. <laughs> you ask, not tell. And it's my decision to say pick or not. Absolutely. So this a little, and, and see, we need to make imagine, them understand the difference between need why? and want. And want. So you can imagine it's, it sounds, you know, very yeah. flimsy. But this is how it begins. Because if they come to your own house, Mr. Bandele, they just go to your fridge and start munching and in here. Mm. And I see children doing that. I yeah, see children I would like acting you, it. Uh, sorry to interrupt you, but I would like you to take this question with that same thought. Um, there's a question from Biola. It says, must you give your children everything they ask for? No. And you must explain why you are not giving them. And she put, there's a rider on that. How do you handle a child who bursts into tears anytime she's asked, uh, she's not given what she wants, and also when she's asked to do assignments at home and she bursts into tears in the presence of guests? How do you handle such a child? Do you, do you also do emotional blackmail with your spouse or with your family members? It's an emotion the child is carrying. She's, she's just expressing. She's just expressing him or herself. You know why? Because it's either you give me that thing or you don't give me. Don't give me. And in front of the guests, I'll yes, I'll I'll tell the child in front of the guests. But you know the rules in this house. With a smile, look at me smiling. You know the rules in the house, my sweetheart. You are my no is no. You aren't getting this any moment from now mm. because you know the rules. Having a guest there doesn't change my mind, my sweetheart. You're not having it. So now I need you to go smile. to your room. Thank you. <laughs> wow. Thank you. Thank that you. that answers it. That so you, answers so it. So you are being you are being firm. You are being firm. And at the same time, time, you are passing a message that yeah. whatever tantrums you throw, it doesn't change my, my decision. Hmm. If I told you no. So an outsider came in to visit us, and you still think you can use that outsider to blackmail me? Right. I was even if the outsider tells me, please never me phone. I'll tell the outsider she knows the culture in this house. This is our culture. A no means no at a particular time. Absolutely. And when we say yes, we can all have it together and jolly jolly. These wow. are little things we don't count. Thank you very much, Ma. Uh, sorry, bring that question up again. Uh, there's a question here from, from the Facebook Live. It says, how do you want to handle a child that keep repeating what you corrected her against? And we keep begging you that she's sorry. I just remember the story of the boy, calm down. <laughs> Mommy, calm down. Yeah, we, we, we quite have a lot of them. They keep doing the same thing all over and all over again. And when they do, the next thing is, Mommy, I'm sorry. I will not do that again. I even have a two-year-old. That already lent the act of saying <laughs> sorry so much that you feel like, oh, I can't just touch this girl. So, what is your advice in terms of parenting? What is the right parenting approach? For such a child, I will first ask the child, for me, can you ask 
Because I told you the child is not the enemy. It's the behavior we want to attack, isn't it? Yes. So why are you do, why are you acting out this behavior? There are valid questions I'm going to ask the child. Why are you acting it? What okay. do you think you will gain from acting like this? What do you think it will add to your, your being as a person? And if you continue this act, what do you think will happen to you? So let the child be one to bring out the consequences of his, his or her own action. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes it's not just about dishing out the, the punishment. Let's also engage the children to ask why they're acting something. Yes. You know, sometimes some of these children act in a particular way because they actually need, have a need. Okay. They have a need. And that's they the have a need. So express themselves. How to do it is, I, I have been quiet, you didn't see me. I have tried to shut down, you didn't see me. Now let me play tantrum. Let me show you attitude. Whether it will ah. get your attention or not. Oh, no. Won't I, so if, you know, even you as an adult, if you show action to attitude to your wife, she say, ah, Mr. Bandele, what happened now? Okay. I, I noticed you were quiet. I, tell, I thought all was well. But now you are giving me, you are eating all around the house. You are banging the door, you are slamming. Oga, may I know what the issue is? I see. <laughs> Engagement wow. it is. Engagement. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Um, let's keep the questions coming. Wow, lots of questions. Uh, I have a question here from <laughs> Nimot. Uh, she says, okay, thank you. God bless you, madam. How, how, would you advise, how would you advise you handle children whereby one has emotional and physical laziness? Who is the <laughs> elder? And by that, infecting the younger ones who are actually willing and energetic without you getting angry to the point of spitting it out, the el spitting it out to the eldest, and how do you serve them different punishment? If you are to consider him being a special personality, I think what this person is trying to say is you you comparing kids. You have a child who really is willing. Yeah, she had already compared the children, and the other one and who, who is not me. willing. But how do you correct the one that is not willing uh, in such a way that? Yeah, I think that's what this person is trying to say, that how do you serve them the punishment without considering him to be a special child? So she doesn't want to come out being, uh, being choosy or being selective, or she doesn't want the favoritism element to set in. I think that is the point. But there are two different individuals in this game. So should she continue to punish the erring child always anytime he or she has and leave the one that has been very very good will the early child not begin to have a bias against the good child even for me as a as as a friend of the child i'm already biased wow <laughs> i'm already having self-esteem issues you can't tag me an emotional lazy child you cannot tag me and for me not to act it out i'll keep acting it out I will keep acting it out. And so these are things I want us to evaluate ourselves. When you, even as the mother, if somebody calls you an emotional, lazy being, how will you feel? How will you react? How will you react? See, I've told you, children are unique. They are different beings, and their temperament and their personality differs. Already now, you've already started comparing the two of them. I told you of my two girls. One is choleric, one is sanguine, and one has a melancholy. You can imagine two strong personalities. <laughs> so you cannot, and see, if one is phlegmatic, phlegmatic are the ones that are a bit laid back. That is the personality. It's not left for you to know how well can you help boost her to be able to bring out the, you know, a, a strength to unless it and make it work for her. Okay. Because if the moment you, can, you start comparing them and you are giving the younger one a upper hand to keep insulting the senior insulting one, the, no matter no, what. No, no, no. And now you're already causing, causing enmity in between your children and which can, can turn them apart forever for future. We need to be careful. If I were you now, what I would do is 
sweetheart. See, some of these words, they must sound, they must sound silly. But see, it does magic on children, it my does. darling. It does. This is, this is a pattern I have seen that you have been replicating when you are in the home or when you are doing house chores or when you are being given a task to do. May I know why you are replicating this attitude? This kind of is there something wrong with you? Is it that you are feeling bad? Is it that you don't like acting? You know, you know, even as adults, some of us don't like kitchen work. As as me that me that I'm talking to you, away, I don't like to wash. I can't use this my nice fingers to wash. I don't like it. And, see, and I find myself saying, if I see, if any of my daughters speak that habit up, I will not kill her because I know I was worse when I was like that. I'm always trying to look for who will help me wash. Talk to my brothers, you know, talk to my big aunts. So you need to find out why she's having yeah, such slow attitude. Yeah, we. I'm sorry. I may have to cut you short. If I allow you, you will go on and on and on and on and on. We have quite a lot of questions uh, from the people in the class. Uh, but please, may I ask that you please keep your questions very short. It's going to help us to be able to... Could please answer this person. The person has said about a movie where they are kissing and each time you tend to drive them yeah. away. Yes. So the quest the question is the question is for such a person, what does kissing? Who does kissing? Is kissing you ask your question your children? Is kissing meant for adults or children? Hmm. Why are they kissing? Uh, In yeah, the we... movie, is it is it child related movie? Yeah, so we, why do they that, want to watch with you? That is a big fight in my house right now because even the, <laughs> the, the movies that are rated uh um Children, 10, 10 13. yes yeah. i was shocked last week when they're watching a cartoon cartoon and in the cartoon the two dolls or the two cartoon characters were kissing so what my what my boys do they they they, they use the uh tropilo to cover <laughs> their face but i do not want them to continue like this so how, awesome. do, we man, how do we manage this in this kind of highly technological uh environment where kids see a lot of things on the social media, they see a lot of things on the website. And there are so many vices being transmitted from this kid, from this, what they see into the life of this kid. So what is your advice? So why not ask them, what is kissing for? Why not show them pictures of who and who are supposed to be involved in kissing? Okay. Yeah. And when- Show when they them, tell them. So when they see it, they can either change it away from not for them to hide it because they will still see more. So let them have an idea that kissing is not meant for children, it's for adults. And it's, this is not the right time for you to start learning how to kiss. But it's the time for you to know this attitude, this action happens. But it's not meant for children, though they are portraying it in the cartoon, which is not right. Thank you. Okay, I go back to the questions. Wow, a lot of questions here. Yeah. Um, would you advise, what would be your advice as a mother of a female teenager? Who, these questions are very long, but please keep your questions short. I think what this person is trying to say is that how would, how can she tutor a teenage child to get okay. used to home course, home chores rather? He said, would it be cruel? to sit and guide her on her own or to let her do the chores on her own? Meaning, I have a teenage girl who needs to do uh, home chores. Do I need to guide this teenage child or just leave her alone, let her do it? If that she does it right or wrong, just leave her, let her make the mistakes. That's the question. But I feel, I feel the child should have started earlier than this. It's mm -hmm. not that she's a, she's a formed... She's a firm thing that you want to start enforcing chores on her. Yeah. Yeah. She should have started early. She should have started packing her plates, you know, start doing things for herself. She should have started knowing how to tidy up the home, whether you are there or not. You know, these are things we should have engaged from an earlier stage. Not when so, but if you are, but if you're having difficulty right now, it's something you need to sit her to do. Let us start by being responsible for herself. Okay. Let us start by caring for herself, by washing herself, her hundies, her clothes, piling them up, know when to tidy them up, you know, sweep her room. Let us start with caring for herself because cleanliness is next to what? Godliness. Godliness. 
Thank you very much. Just start little, little talk like that. Thank you very much, Yairi. Um, there's another question here. It said, sex is not taught in primary school. So mm. how do I answer questions like, mommy, what is clitoris to a 10 years old? 10 year old is a, is a mature child already. <laughs> you, you can't hide it anymore. Bring out the diagram. Bring out the diagram of the body of the body. Let the child see what it is. This is not the time to put words under our tongue anymore. We need to be, we need to be open. If a 10 year old already know what clitoris is, so why do you still want to hide it? Go online, bring out the physiology uh, diagram of a woman body. Teacher, what vagina is, what a clitoris is, what a nurse is. Even let her know that people are even molesting their sperm through the anus. This is the time to put, put in information concerning sexuality, concerning all sorts of things happening, transgender, you know, all sorts. Let her now be familiar with her body system to know the meaning of clitoris, what yeah. is meant for, our role to keep it safe from not being tampered with, an, with a stranger or whosoever. Thank Let you. her know now it's, it's her duty to guide it because it's her is a system, is a body. Yeah, Let her love it. Absolutely. Thank you very much. Yeah, anyway. Ah, okay. I have to go faster now because we still have quite a lot of things to do. <laughs> still have a game to play. The winner is going to get a fantastic prize. Um, and we will talk about a couple of other things. But I have a question here. Uh, I will summarize, I'll paraphrase this question. The lesson teacher came okay. to the house and uh, asked for different things. Asked for rubber band. The daughter gave it to her. Asked for things in the kitchen. The daughter went inside and gave it to her. The lesson teacher started asking for things that probably he or, she, he or she shouldn't ask, ask for. And now the mother tried to challenge this daughter. Why are you giving your lesson to everything he has asked for? And the daughter also challenged the mom back and say, you asked us that we should give. You told us there's benefits in giving. So now our worry or our <laughs> concern is, how can she balance what she has already told the child and what she's now telling the child? She has taught this child to learn how to give, but this child now has overlearned <laughs> and given up everything. <laughs> the same thing with my boys too. They see visitors in my house, they go into the fridge and they, they serve the visitors themselves and they go and the chocolates are reserved from my wife. They go ahead and pick it up <laughs> and give it to the visitor without my knowledge. So <laughs> how, do you, how do you guide these kids uh, in knowing their boundaries? Anyways, it still uh, boils down to how values we pass to them. I'm even happy that they could even take the initiative to offer uh, a visitor, you know, things to munch or to drink. That's yeah. very good. Kudos, well done. So, but this is it. What you tell them is, please, you either serve a drink or you serve water. You don't give a stranger anything beyond that. And if you still intend to give either your friends or a visitor such things, you come to ask daddy or you ask mommy. Beyond water, beyond drinks, you don't take, you ask. But once a visitor steps into this house, the first thing you offer is either water or a drink because it's out of courtesy they are doing it. And because they have seen you replicating it, doing it, and that's why they are doing it. But then there must be caution. Anything beyond water or drink, you ask daddy or mommy, because this might be things we reserved for ourselves as a family to munch on when we're having our family time or when we're, you know, having a, a, a wonderful time. Yeah. So these are boundaries you need to teach. As long as you are teaching them values or system, putting in system in place. So when they air, you'll be able to remind them. I thought we had talked about this. There is only water. So why did you do it? Why did you give okay. something you never asked for permission? You know, it, children are reasonably being. They think. They think. So we just need to engage them and let them understand why they are doing all sorts of, you know, why they can't go beyond that thing. And give them the reason, a valid reason. Because sometimes some, some people react to nuts, to chocolate. They can eat that chocolate if it has um, not an order, it could, react it could react on their system. Yeah. So that's why you let you, so you need to let them know why they, because they'll ask you, but that is why. 
Sometimes water is a very, water doesn't have anything bad. Water is nourishing and good for the system. But when you go beyond without asking daddy and mommy, it could turn to something else. So that's why we also need to be careful. Thank you very so that's much. That's just the information. Thank you so much. Yeah, we, we got this question via email. Uh, by the way, our email is masterclass.topwebandele at gmail.com. Uh, and this question says, um, I want to ask, how can one successfully manage children such that one do not show preference uh, on anyone? I think you touched a bit about it. Uh, yes, I did. Yes. And the second one is, I have some cousins, younger cousins, that are not doing well. They are only product of broken homes. And due to this, their lives have been highly affected. How can one bring them mm. back on track, both spiritually and physically? Wow. This is deep. Can you repeat that again? It's deep. I have younger cousins that are not doing well. They are product okay. of broken homes. And due to okay. What does it mean by they are not doing well, sir? Uh, How do you define they are not doing well? well in terms of character, is it educational? I think because we have to make it up now. Know. Because I, they, they, are, they are not much details. Uh, I think okay. let's, let's talk about educational. Let's talk about morally. Uh, they probably are not doing well morally. They probably are not doing well educationally uh, okay. because they don't have their parents um, with them. They are from broken homes. So she's asking that, what can she do? Are they staying with her now? Uh, well, okay. So I will, <laughs> maybe, maybe let's <laughs> pack this question because it's from an email. So uh, let me just let me just give let me just give the, you know let me just respond. Card 70 at gmail .com. Please, maybe you can give more details afterwards, and I can pass it on yeah. to you yeah, with then she can respond. Yes, let's move yes. to the but top question. In, in other words, just speak to them and ask them why they are having issues in their lives. Okay. You know, so that they can relate better to you. Yes, thank you very much. Uh, the last question here uh, says, "What can one do if the eldest child?" Is not accommodating yes, or caring to the younger one as you wish. What have What have you been saying to that child? Mm. What have you been saying to the child every time things happen in the house? Have you been the oh. one shouting on him? You don't tolerate. The moment he keeps repeating, you don't tolerate. She will not tolerate. Mm. And when she also talking to you or when she does things to you, do you also mm. tolerate her? Do you also listen? Mm. Because she will, re you will respond the way you respond to her. She will respond to like like that to her siblings. Yeah. But in all, in all, just sit her down and let her know that. You remember in my conclusion, I said we are one family, Absolutely. and that is what family do. We stick Absolutely. together, we stay together, yeah, we love one good. another, and we support one another. Thank you very much, Yaiwe. I before we go into uh, a quick game today, uh, I have another question. Yes, sir. How can we help a child as Thomas? And as a result of this, he is always entering into his shell anytime he wants to talk in public. He wouldn't uh, want to my, answer questions in class because it's Thomas. My colleague had responded, Ahmed Mohammed, we work together. So ah, okay. I've seen him, he's a psychologist, so he has responded to that question, and I think that's just enough. He has told the person to get a speech therapist, and at the same time, you need to also be encouraging the child. You are not the only one, uh, you are not the only one with stammering issues. You can even go online and check people that have been in that condition before, and you know, now they are motivated. We have lots of them that are now motivational speakers, so use such such examples to show you know show it to the child let the child know that it is not a disability you can't move around with it is just who you are and that shows you are unique you are created uniquely in your own way affirm the child affirm the child let the child be comfortable with who he or she is Absolutely. but ahmed has ahmed has responded as well Okay, thank you very much. Thank you so much. <laughs> yeah, we, now we've gotten to the very, very interesting part of uh, masterclass we talk about daily, where we tend to um, charge our brains as well and check what have we learned. Um, so I'm going to ask every one of us to please look for another phone. So if you're using your phones right now, collect your spouse's phone, collect your wife's, your husband's phone, or if you're using your computer, please just go on your phone and uh, type www.kahoot.it. 
www.kahoot. I'm going to put it in the chat. Uh, Kahoot.it. Okay. Please go to that um, page now. And I will give us a code. I believe we can all see my screen. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. So once you get into www.kahoot.it, you see something similar to this. I want to believe that we are all there. W am, I allowed, am I allowed to play too, Sam? Yeah, please, uh, you can play and win as well. <laughs> <laughs> www.kahoot.ie and you'll be required to enter a code. The code is 898562. 898562. Uh, if you are joining us on Facebook as well, please do the same. Um, just go online with another phone or any other system. Yes, I can see some players are coming in already. I'm there already. Wow. Okay. I can see <laughs> M1. I can see Yai Wei. Just go to 898562. Okay. Once I'm able to get, we're about 33 now. We were about 45 at some point. Some people left. So once I'm able to get a considerable number, we will start. The winner of this game will actually go with a fantastic prize. There are questions about parenting part of which we've also learned today. Okay, I have nine players already. Welcome. I can see DJ. I can see Abby, Baby Nox. Okay, fantastic. I can see Chris O2, Mr. B, Vani, and Omoba. All right, can we have more? Okay, Olanike, welcome. Akinpelu, welcome. I can see 12 players already. Wow. Okay. Just go to www.kahoot.it, enter the code, then enter your name, and let's go. Okay, if you're able to eat 20, that would be great, then I will start the game. It's just 10 questions of 20 seconds each. Okay, fantastic. Welcome. Uh, 898562. <laughs> Someone entered the code as a name. <laughs> as a name. <laughs> no, please, you can change it again, change it to your name. Uh, Joseph, welcome. Akikwelu Olanike. All right, I think we can start. Uh, mm -hmm. Let me allow one person to come in. 15 people in the game is just perfect. One more person. Okay. Yes, absolutely. So you will see the questions from the screen here. And uh, on your phone, you can see, the, you will see the colors. All you need to do is just to click on the colors. Um, the color that signifies or represents the answers. Okay, this also is a uh, yeah. Wow, seventeen players. Should we just wait till? 20? <laughs> I think I think we should wait more, sir. All right, let's just wait to give uh, for for twenty people to come on board. Uh, by the way, I would like to say thank you very much once again. Uh, yeah, we, this is fantastic. Uh, You're welcome, sir. Thank you so much. I believe that everyone has learned. Uh, I have really learned a lot. And um, this video also will be available for us on my Facebook page, Facebook page, temichope.bandele. Just search for Temichope Bandele. Um, you will see, you will, can have this video then. Then it will also be uploaded on YouTube as well for us to see. Oh, awesome. I'm going to start this game right away. Okay. This is MCTB Model 2. And the first question, guidance means using firmness and understanding to help children learn how to behave. Fantastic. So when you're talking about guidance, it means you have to be firm and also understanding at the same time. Okay, so six people got that correct. Uh, five people missed it. We go to the next question. 
Ugo, wow, Ugo is top, top in the chat. Uh, While well, we have Alani K, Mr. B, J, B, and Olutoyi. Okay, let's see. Let's see questions. This is the ultimate goal of discipline. This is the ultimate goal. This is the ultimate goal. What is this? Fantastic. Okay, so we got uh, five people say it's about self discipline. So the goal of discipline is really to get self discipline. Okay, um, I'll go to the next question. Ugo is still leading. Wow. Ugo is still leading, and Habi is the highest climber here. Con uh, well done, Ugo, and Mr. B as well. Next question, question three. Parents teach their children by what? Being a role model, by certain limits, by yelling, or by positive reinforcement. Parents teach their children by being a role model, by also setting limits, and by positive reinforcement. You cannot teach your children by yelling. We hear that also today. Fantastic. Um, let's see who is on the leaderboard. Wow, Mr. B has climbed up and Ugo has dropped. Mr. B is our highest climber. Answer streak of three. Fantastic. Okay, let's see. The next question, authoritarian parents are the people Yes, when you talk about authoritarian parents, they are strict. So 15 people got this correct. Two people said they are laid back. No, authoritarian parents are not officially <laughs> laid back. Okay, let's see who's on the board. Ugo is back again. Ugo is back again. I need to know who this Ugo is. He's on fire. In <laughs> Ugo is back again. Now we have Ugo, Mr. B, A, B, and yeah, yeah, we're mm. Let's see. <laughs> I, uh, let's see if you're going to win this game. Okay. Um, <laughs> By the way, yeah, we didn't set these questions. I did. So, yeah, the rest <laughs> a parent who ignores rule breaking. Is he an authoritarian parent? The answer is permissive. Permissive. Oh, five people got it correct. Uh, nine people got this wrong. Um, I need to zoom this thing in. Okay. So parents who actually ignores rule breaking, meaning they don't care. Those are uh, parents who are quite permissive. They are not authoritarian and they are not assertive, meaning if you break the rule, it doesn't really matter to them. Okay. Let's... Wow, let's see A, B. A, B is on top. Fire A, B. I hope this is the A, B that I know. Okay. <laughs> uh, I have a friend, a very good friend of mine. I buy me like you want to like A, B. The next question. This type of parent highly values in when what kind of value Answer is assertive democratic, so not authoritarian, not permissive. So 13 people got this correctly, two people missed it. Let's see who is on the leaderboard. Uh, Ugo again. I will call this person <laughs> Ugo on fire. Ugo on fire. Ugo wants to win our prize today. Question number seven This type of parent believes children should obey their parents without questioning. Okay, they believe. Okay. 
people got it correct. Thank you very much. Uh, sorry, not assertive democratic parent, because um, as, for assertive democratic parents, they really do not. Uh, they don't. They're not the type that actually believe that. Uh, how do I put it? They, the type of parents that are actually authoritarian are the ones they that, say it the way they want you to act it exactly don't ask me questions my friend i am your parent yeah. <laughs> i am the one that decides who are you, you i did not i did not uh, will say, me, 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 uh, me, 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 me. those are the ways my mom used to say it in those days <laughs> so these are authoritarian uh parents let's see uh who is on the scoreboard ugo is still there Ugo is still there. And number eight out of 10, you should always be the child for unintentional misbehavior. True or false? You should always be a child. And I love the picture. people said false you shouldn't beat the child for every unintentional behavior one person said always you should but i don't think that is correct uh, no that's not right <laughs> all right uh happy ugo is still on board on the leaderboard um the ninth question there is no perfect parent parenting is a continuous i remember in the video i <laughs> you want to become a perfect parent, and then right. you're like, eh, so, I'm a perfect parent, and the other one the answer is true. There is no perfect parent. Parenting is a continuous learning. It's a journey that we all have to embark on. And the last question, Ugo, Ugo A B, Mr. B, and Yaiwe. The last question, dash is the greatest threat to the sanity of the child. Is our environment? The parent ignorance? Is it brother neither? Or is it over? What is the greatest threat to the sanity of the child? The answer is parent ignorance. The answer is parent ignorance. That is the threat to our children in sanity today. Not really, and not only the environment. Fantastic. Exactly. Thank you very much. Uh, let's see the podium. Bravo, Mr. B, uh, AB, and who is this? Who is this? Who is this? Ugo! Ugo. <laughs> <laughs> so congratulations, Ugo, AB, and Mr. B. Uh, thank you very much. That was that's fantastic. Uh, you awesome, guys. Awesome, awesome. Uh, if you want to see, I think the rest of us may also want to see where we stand. 24 people played. You can see, you can see your names. Okay, you can see your names uh yes and some people awesome. did not even get any question correct <laughs> thank you very much this is fantastic this is fantastic awesome so, awesome yes thank you so much yeah we i really appreciate you coming on the show today it's really thank great you, time sister. um ladies and gentlemen this is master class with Dr. Bandele. this is our second edition the first edition was two weeks ago where we talked about hypertension uh, the next edition will be in another two weeks. It is going to be every fortnight. So if you want to be part of this show, if you want to be, uh, if you want to come on the show, please drop us an email at masterclass.topwebbandele at gmail.com. Masterclass.topwebbandele at gmail.com. Then we will invite you to the show. And also masterclass, uh, Okay, MCTB MC also have this weekly uh, show for kids. So we have the WhatsApp group for children where we engage them in similar Kahoot games um, to teach them morals, to teach them uh, basic education, to teach them um, about principles, to teach them also about God. 
So you have 10 biblical questions and 40 general questions and moral questions. So if you want your child to be part of this, it is totally free. And we have two groups. One group is full. We have 256 families in group A. And in group B, I think we have about 100 families already. So in total, we engage about 400 families every Sunday um, um, for these scout games. So please, if you want to be part of it, just drop us an email on uh, masterclass.tokwebandele at gmail.com. Thank you very much. Yeah, we, um, before we run <laughs> this up, um, can you tell us a bit about what you do in your organization? The parent oh. I, I need to know. Oh. I'm quite curious. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much, Mr. Temitokwe. Uh, it's a great honor to be on your show today, and I am not taking that for granted. I hope uh, every one of us have been able to learn one thing or the other. I, myself, as a parent, I'm still in the learning school and I'm beginning mm. to use everything I hear in the society, what I get to hear from other parents like you, to also a nest to build a safe home and a sustainability uh, environment for my okay. children as well. So thank you once again. Uh, for Parental 360, like uh, you can see, that is the t-shirt I'm wearing this evening. Parental 360 oh. Initiative, it's an, a non-profit organization what, well, what we do is to advocate for the safety of children in the society. Uh, I've been doing this for quite a while now. I've uh, been in this business for like uh, four to five years now. And uh, all I do is to speak and advocate and to support children in every capability I have, you know, and uh, to make them to be, to thrive in the society. Okay. And for our organization as well, we have some schools, some children we go to in their schools. These are children that are still struggling, whether some that are having some disability challenges, whereby we look out for children that their parents cannot afford to buy them the necessity for them to thrive in their educational system, whether they are uniforms, books to mm. use to write, you know, shoes to wear to the school and all that so no. i do that sometime and then i also work with some orphanage whereby i call in friends and families to donate for some of these children because these children wow. are also going to they're also going to be part of us in the system and there's nothing we can do they will one way or the other mix and mingle with our children so we need to learn to integrate them accept them and love them whatsoever no. challenges they might have gone through in their childhood so this is what i do basically fantastic fantastic and uh, <laughs> you talked about you talked about helping the less privileged and you do this yes uh, on your own um yes. you're talking about <laughs> uniforms for kids and stuff like that i think i heard you say something like that yes sir yes, if sir. i may ask on this show sorry ladies and gentlemen this show is also a non-profit driven show and um we're not going to ask money from anyone please uh but we, okay, myself, my family, and MCTV would like to also partner with you. We are quite interested in this. Oh. And um, we, would like to, <laughs> we would like to have um, uniforms for kids, for kids, at least 20 of them. Uh, so how, how much does each child, how much does uniform cost for each child? Uh, for the school, um, it's a school with uh, children with disability, like I mentioned earlier. Okay. Some of them, their uniform costs as little as 2,000 euro. Wow. Okay. Yes. So, yeah, whenever you're ready, <laughs> we, will, we will get the kids, we will get 20 <laughs> kids um, to have uniform. And please, I have a lot of other friends here. If you're also willing to be part of this, just drop me a WhatsApp, drop me a mail. Thank uh, you. Thank you. Let's, let's, let's help these younger ones. Um, 2,000 naira for a child is not much. So, if you want to buy a uniform, for a child, you may want to buy one or two. Please let me know. You can also reach out directly to Yaiwe. Our handle is at Olutiti, Olutiti, and my own handle on Instagram is at Tokwe Bandele. It's simple like that. Uh, please, if you want to be part of this, reach out to us. Let's get the uniforms for them at least. 2,000 Naira for a child. Thank you so much. I'm quite happy to have you on the show. <laughs> this is awesome. Thank, Thank you. you so much. And I'm sure that whenever we call you again, you will definitely come around. 
Um, Absolutely. Ladies and gentlemen, if you really want to be part of this show, just drop me a mail. You know what to do. If you have a topic we need to bring on the show as well, you have a topic you want to recommend for us to bring on the show, it's a masterclass. So we're quite going to look into different, different, different quarters of life. Um, I'm actually looking for someone who can come here to tell, tell us about wheels. Wheels. A lot of us don't know anything about writing wheels. You might say, I'm just 40, I'm just 30. Uh, and families have issues afterwards. So we're going to talk about investments. We're going to talk, bring again a um, topic around National Housing Fund. I'm still looking for a date to, to bring this on. We're going to have topics on values. We're going to have topics on fertility. We're going to have topics on, uh, we're going to do high blood pressure again because it's a, it's a request from one of, our, one of our viewers. Once again, I say thank you very much. It's nice having you on the show. It's been two hours on the show and it's been, <laughs> wow. uh, it's been a great time. Thank you to all our, our viewers also on Facebook. I quite appreciate you. Thank you so much. You. Until I see you again you. in another two weeks, be good, be strong, and stay positive. This is Masterclass of the Pandemic. God bless you. Thank you very much. Bye, sir. Bye. Weekend. Slam dunk, are you ready to make me? I'm here to make me.